All right, gentlemen, if you currently struggle with beating the hell out of your wiener, this is going to be the most impactful video that you watch all year. Come on. Uh, <laughs> today, we have a special guest. This is my good friend, John Franco Martinez. He actually runs a ministry, a coaching business. He helps men to break free from lust, overcome addiction, masturbation, beating your chicken, the whole nine. <laughs> He's a professional. So, Amen. John Franco, we've known each other for like almost three years now. Yeah, I'm out of breath years. because it took a while to set up this camera. <laughs> but yeah, you're going to learn a lot today. Um, John Franco personally helped me in many ways mm. to break free from lust and to stay free. And he's going to have a lot of value, a lot of things you're going to learn from this video. So get out of the comment section, <laughs> stop scrolling around, put this video on full screen and make sure that you lock in and watch this video all the way till the end. Cool. And so, John Franco, if you could, for the yeah. boys watching at home, and if there's any women, you're of the small minority watching this channel, but <laughs> John Franco, if you could kind of share your testimony, speak into your struggles with PMO, and then also what life without corn, being a part of your life has done mm. for you and, and how it kind of brought you to God. Just kind of give the guys a full rundown of, of yeah. your story. Yeah, so I was saved. I want to say around like when I was like 19 or, or 20 years old um, and I struggled with, you know, the P word, corn, whatever you want to say, um, for years. I mean, I think I got introduced to it when I was like 12, like a couple kids, you know, out in recess, like they were just talking about like websites and whatnot. And I was like, what is this? Yeah. And then I just searched it up and I was like, whoa, that's probably not something that I should be watching. But, you know, and I kind of found it gross early on, but then, like, after I just started getting into, I guess, like, puberty and whatnot, like, I just started to become more interested in that. And then when I was, like, 14, it was, like, a full-on addiction. Yeah. Like, you know, I was watching it, like, two, three times a day, like, some, like, degenerate stuff, like, in school, you know, the doing 4chan that. type yeah, stuff. Yeah, just terrible stuff. But what would happen to me was, and everybody's different, but when I struggle with or the P word uh, and, and whatever, right? Um, what happened to me was I would get like extreme like social anxiety because there would just be so much guilt and so much shame, but I would mask it with the fact that like, oh, everybody is doing it within my friend group. And every single kid within my school, like there wasn't any kid that wasn't talking about the P word and wasn't talking about perverted stuff, right? It was almost like a game. It was almost like a joke, like who could do it the most type of thing. So... For me, I always masked it with, the, oh, well, everybody else does it. I'm not hurting anybody. It's not that bad. At least I'm not doing this. At least I'm not doing that, which made it in my head think it's okay when it really wasn't okay. And I wasn't a Christian during that time when I was 14. You know, I grew up in a Christian family, but I was never really saved. I kind of just knew of Jesus, but I didn't really know who Jesus was. So I always felt the conviction. But like anything, the more that you do it and the more that you just justify it within your head, like the conviction slowly but surely goes away and you just kind of just think it's normal life and everybody does it and, and whatnot. Um, and it wasn't until around I got 18 years old. Um, I was actually talking to this one girl when I was in my first year of university and uh, I started talking to her, like I really started to like her. And um, one thing led to another, like, you know, and we wanted to get intimate and nothing worked, <laughs> you know? And I had what's called, can I say it, P-I-E-D? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So it's called <laughs> induced erectile dysfunction. So like literally, like I was so addicted to like the P word that like I- Try not to get demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> so like I couldn't literally, like I couldn't have- sex with the woman <laughs> like just think about how like you know what i mean just think yeah. about it's so demoralizing right demoralizing embarrassing um and then just you know it was just like a lot of stuff that ended up happening within that relationship it didn't last much longer after that there was just so much embarrassment on my end embarrassment from her end as well um it just a lot of stuff went down and um i didn't do anything after that because yeah. i was just so afraid <laughs> but it's true like even the girl like yeah imagine from her perspective she's gonna start thinking and you boys at home mm. you better not be fornicating anyway because yes. we're christian Amen. men masculine men of god Amen. but like the girl is gonna think what's wrong with me yeah. like if your wiener's not working down there <laughs> she's not gonna think like yeah. oh like there's something wrong with him she's gonna wonder like what's wrong with me am i not attractive yeah. is there something like am i ugly am i overweight like she's gonna get it all all in her own head yes and deep down she doesn't even know that you were struggling with corn yeah right she just thought like oh i must not he must not be attracted to me mm -hmm. so that that affects her even more than like just your embarrassment right yeah 
yeah. But it, yeah, it was like tough because for a while, like, you know, I was like afraid of women because of that, that situation. It was just so much shame and so much mm -hmm. fear. Like, like it, it, you know, I didn't make any moves to, towards women or even like engage anything like that for like, like <laughs> years because like I was just, there was just a lot of stuff that I had to go through um, when it came to that situation. And it just, I mean, the P word, it just destroyed everything. You know what I mean? It didn't just destroy my relationship with God. Like, it destroyed my confidence. It destroyed who I was. Like, I was like a shell of myself because of it. Um, social anxiety, um, you know, just being afraid of everything. You know what I mean? Being afraid of, you know, taking risks, you mm -hmm. know, just being so addicted to the comfort zone. You know, not ever wanting to get uncomfortable. And if anyone has ever experienced any form of success watching this, like you know that you have to get uncomfortable to succeed in anything that you do. Amen. But when you're watching the P word, right, and you're stuck in lust, what ends up happening is you train your brain to only look towards the easy things within life, which yield to no results in any single area within your life, right? So um, I guess in a nutshell, like that, that's my testimony. I, I'll go into as well deeper, like um, what led me to quit. So I knew that, you know, the P war was destroying my life in every single area, like uh, every single area within my life. And I knew I needed to quit. Um, and I tried for so long, but I couldn't and I couldn't and I couldn't. Um, and then one week, like I just found myself one week free. And I was like, dude, like if I, and I was 18 years old at the time. And I told myself that if I'm ever going to make something out of myself, like it needs to happen or I need to overcome lust. And this is like do or die type of thing because it was getting closer where like I was going to work a desk job you know what I mean <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with a desk job it's just I guess not for me and I knew that I was called for bigger and better things right. and I said I, I told myself that if I continue to go into lust then I, I'm going to end up working in a desk job I'm going to end up you know living a life that I'm never going to like and it's just so much pressure but it needed to happen all that pressure and I think people don't realize you know the amount of damage that doing within their life which is why they're okay continually going to it even though they know in the back of their mind it's it's killing them so it was do or die and I, it was like the most inefficient way to quit but i mean i did it right I, I quit lust and my life started changing for good like i just i got way more confident like you know and i wasn't anything spectacular but it, like to where i was to where i was like like six months after overcoming loss, like, I mean, it was like a noticeable yeah. difference. And like my friends in college were like, whoa, like you, there's something different. Like, you know what I mean? And I was telling them to quit, but then they just clowned me. You know what I mean? They were like, oh, whatever type yeah. of thing. You probably did something else or uh, yada, yada. Um, and yeah, I just, I just kept going. And then um, I think a year later I started the program, the TRF program where we help men to overcome lust and yeah. 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 Now we do you are, think that? Now. Do you think you would have ever even started the business to begin with if you were still like struggling with PMO or still struggling with? Well, no, because <laughs> I would wouldn't have been free, you know. Yeah. But um, like any business, any in business, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, no, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it, it's very impressive when someone can do a business or someone can do a ministry with being addicted to lust and not controlling their sexual desires because it's like, first of all, if you're able to even become successful while having that addiction, imagine how much more you can become successful without yeah. the addiction. It just destroys your discipline, which you need discipline to be able to control yourself, to be able to be self-employed and be a business owner right. or be a leader of any kind. Like you have to hold yourself accountable. And if you can't hold yourself accountable when no one else is looking, when people are looking, it's going to be the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like even from knowing you for the last three years, right? It's been yeah. like three years. Mm -hmm. Like seeing, like you broke free from lust, you started the business, but it translated a lot into you taking risks in different areas of your life, like yes. even socially as well. Because whenever I first met you, like your social skills were good, but they started to improve like the more that you put yourself out there, like going to the church, getting plugged into the youth, putting yes. yourself out there, starting the business, getting success in the business, like speak into how like breaking free from lust really skyrocketed your personal development also like finding christ and like becoming yeah. christian becoming a leader inside of the church and like becoming like a youth leader that you are now yeah yeah um definitely i think my social skills have, have gotten better and i think it's because like what you said like it's just the you're not afraid to take well there's always going to be like that back of your mind like oh should i do this like mm -hmm. taking risks and what i mean risks socially is like 
you know, going and approaching that one person that you know that you know needs prayer. You know what I mean? Yeah. You ever had that where it's like, I know that person needs mm -hmm. prayer. I know that the Holy Spirit's leading me to go to that person, but you're like, ah, oh, man, you know, maybe maybe another someone day. else will do it. Someone yeah. else will do it, right? <laughs> um, and it's just like those moments where it's like it's like now or never type of thing, and you go out and do it. You just take a leap of faith. Like it's just oh, so much stuff happens, um, and that happened within my life because. Um, like I mentioned, like, you know, overcoming lust, it removes the guilt and the shame. Like, you know, you're a lot more disciplined. Like I believe, you know, as well, like how you do one thing is how you do everything. So it just, all these small wins over time, um, it just stacks up to a lot. Like, like I used to be, you know, you, you know, like, you know, like my testimony, but you know, Brayden never knew me when I was like in the world, like, um, you know, within high school or, or like college. So I guess it wasn't that bad, but Man, like I used to be like really awkward, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like really, really awkward. Like, and we were talking about it yesterday. Like the word incel, right? Mm -hmm. Which means like you want to be with a woman, right, and be intimate and you know have a relationship. And I wanted that for like the first eighteen years of my life so badly, but I was just so <laughs> yeah weird, so <laughs> weird <laughs> that I could never do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't until like I got into college where it's like. That actually started to happen. Um, but then, thankfully, like, the Lord literally blocked me away from that. Because that only really happened for, like, a month. You know what I mean? Before the Lord just said, like, stop. You mm -hmm. know? And everything. Every, and it was like all these people started leaving my life and, and stuff like that. It was craziness. But Yeah. And mm -hmm. I know there's going to be a lot of guys who maybe they're not Christians and they just click on the video because they're like, oh, I, I struggle with corn or I keep beating the hell out of my wiener. <laughs> right? And I think that... For a lot of people, like semen retention or getting off of like watching corn all the time and, and having a, an addiction of lust really opens up the door to like spirituality or at least like forming some kind of connection yeah. with God. John Frank, would you mind kind of walking them through your experience with like because you broke free from lust and yeah. it was more so for like wanting to get yeah I want to get a cod girlfriend or I want to yeah, like yeah. get in the gym and use this energy to get in the gym but like that inevitably ended up putting you on the path towards finding Jesus and finding Christ. Yeah, it was right? definitely towards self-development. It was actually towards like new age, like mm. wanting to like, you know, align my chakras or like <laughs> yeah. whatever like I was doing at the time. Um, and then I found out that like that was <laughs> that was not it, right? Yeah. Um, and then what ended up happening was, you know, I just started to meet more people. You know, I started to meet Tristan, Brayden's brother, you know, eventually Brayden himself. Um, just a lot of people started coming into my life, you know, and started pouring into me and started kind of leading me towards the right direction. But, you know, I, I always had like a humble heart, you know what I mean, where it's like, I just want the truth. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to, you know, be like, I guess, like the best, you know what I mean? Because yeah. with New Age, it really is like boasting yourself, you know what I mean? How can I align like my chakras and get the highest vibration and frequency from myself, right? Mm -hmm. How can I abstain for my, everything is for you, for you, for you, for you. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, eventually like went, went away from that path and uh, started going to Bible studies, you know, started going to church, um, started walking, you know, closer and closer and closer. And um, on October 22 or October 24th, I mean, this was two years ago, at the, almost two years ago. Um, you know, I was watching like a, a live stream, right, um, with like deliverance and whatnot, and like a whole bunch of stuff started popping off. Like, I got delivered myself from like a whole bunch of crazy things. Um, and like, my friend called me up, and you know, he did a whole bunch of stuff. He prayed over me. And, like, and that was the day where it like really kicked off mm -hmm. everything for me within my journey with the Lord, where like I broke my PlayStation. Um, <laughs> you know, I got rid of all my jerseys because I idolized football and like sports. Um, and I got rid of just everything that was a waste of time from my life that was taking away from what I could have put into the Lord. Um, and then after that, yeah, I just packed the bag and then I moved to San Antonio where I found like a church I liked and, um, I started serving there and then, yeah, it's just every single year. It's like, there's so much like that goes on where it's like, like, this is crazy, but like all this never would have happened if, if, if I would have stayed in, like, if I would have stayed within the P word, right. I keep saying that, <laughs> but if I would have stayed in the P word, the P word. Like, I, right now, I would be, so I'm 23 right now, I would be in a desk job, working a job I don't like, probably for my dad, I'd say. Um, Accountant. Accounting, finance. <laughs> um, 
And then, yeah, I would just be working a job I don't like in a city where I don't like with friends that I don't really like in a job. Or no and, friends. Yeah. You know? In a life where I don't like with probably women that I don't like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Settled and everywhere. Exactly. It's just, uh, just that thought alone, if you can really visualize that, honestly, that should be enough to overcome lust. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, you know? like a lot of people watching this video are probably in that spot where they either... They don't have a job and they live with their mommy and their daddy in their parents' basement and they want a job or they want to grow up or they want to have like the blessings that God would give them if they were giving it 100% in their <clears> life, <throat> yeah. but they don't, right? They settle on everything and it starts with the corn addiction. It starts with the second that you feel an urge, like immediately going and relapsing, mm. you have no discipline and that translates into every aspect of your life. Like if every single time you feel a certain emotion of like, oh man, I'm horny or whatever, and you just mm. go beat off immediately, like that's yeah. going to translate in so many different areas of your yeah. life because it's like, you're not going to be able to stay strict on a diet. You're not going to be able to work on a business or grow like a YouTube channel. Like I know there's a lot of people who look up to me and watch this channel and they want to have the same things. But like if you can't even abstain from like the simple things and like trying to actually walk the narrow path and flee from sexual immorality like the Bible talks about, then so many different areas of your life are going to suffer. Your relationships are going to suffer. Your self-worth is going to suffer. Your relationship mm. with God is going to suffer. And a lot of guys don't realize that. Like, I've had so many conversations with people, like, whether it's at church or out and about or at the gym or whatever, and you know that all these guys struggle. Like, you would say probably, like, 95, 99% yeah, of men walking around have a corn addiction and they at least and watch 20s, it. Yeah. Right, or they, they at least watch it, like, yeah. multiple times a month or per week. And these guys, they, they hate their life, right? Their life is not good. Like, if you really ask or, them. Or they think it's just okay, but they don't know how much better it could be. Right, exactly. Like, yeah. they think it is... They think it's okay. Bring me back to the point I was making. Yeah. They think it's okay. They think like, oh, well, masturbation's not in the Bible, you know? Like mm -hmm. it's not directly in there. God God gave you those those desires. Like he wants us to be able to have a release every now and then. All that coping that people will do yeah. when they're just lying to themselves. You know, like they're not actually rooting God's word. They don't have the right men around them. They don't have other guys around them that are free. And I know, like, one of the biggest things that helped me to break free from lust was whenever I met you, mm. and I finally realized that there was people out there that were free. Yes. Because for the longest time, similar to what you were saying, everyone around me, whenever I was in high school or whenever I was in college, everybody everyone. struggled. You had a similar experience. And it's just like, sorry to cut you off, but I want no, to say this good. point, but, like, it's just so sad because it's like, you go to all these churches, and it's like, bro, like, everybody you know what i mean it's like everybody is, is struggling with lust like and it's just like the devil has such a strong like i always like feel emotional right now it's like it's really hard you know what i mean because it's like like i because i work with the youth right and i see like the fruit of terrible fathers you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's like man like these women are going through so much these young women because like their father was not able to step up and they right. were, you know, fornicating with other women when they were married. They were watching porn or the P word <laughs> and like, you know, doing drugs and all that. And like, it's just terrible fathers. You cannot be a good father while being addicted to lust. You cannot be a, a good husband to your wife while being addicted to lust. And if yeah. you can get by doing that, imagine how much better you would be without the addiction. It's like, Man, it's just like the, the devil has just such a stronghold on men and, and fathers specifically, where it's like if the head of the household goes down, everything else crumbles along with it. Yeah. And it's like women are getting the negative consequences of just terrible fathers and terrible men in today's age. And it's like it's only getting worse, unfortunately. So yeah. what would you say to the guy who's watching this video right now who thinks you know, I, sh I struggle with this right now. I struggle with the youthful passions, right? Because yeah, I'm young. Yeah. And whenever I get married, then it'll stop. Like, then I'll stop watching and I'll be able to have sex with my wife. Like, what would you say to that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I get this a lot. Um, and we have a lot of guys like that, that we help that, you know, come to our program that, um, you know, they, they thought the exact same thing. You know what I mean? Well, when I get married, then I'll, I'll stop. Or... You know, when I get in a relationship, I'll stop. Or when I get at this point in my career, or when I get this age, or when this event happens, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. But it's almost, you know, you're just procrastinating on what needs to happen right now. And it's like, sure, like, can you get married while being addicted and, you know, hide it from your wife, right? Like, you know, anyone can do that. But it's like, what's the point of living in secrecy, you know? And like, right. 
I don't You're know. Not escaping anything. Exactly. Right? God is calling young men to mm. step up and break free from this now before, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you get the girlfriend, like even start dating somebody. Mm. Like my advice would be like, you need to get control over this now. Like not even like, Oh, well, I bust a nut like once a month. Like I'm doing pretty good. Like all that stuff. Like it needs to be eradicated from your life yes. because yeah. like regardless of, you know, if you do it once a month or whatever, you don't do it that often. Like it's going to affect your judgment in so many different areas of your life. Like think mm. about the girls that you're going to be attracted to if you're still struggling with lust. It'd be anybody. Right. It's little, little <laughs> anybody, but also it's like you're going to be going. They don't have the to girl. be Christian. You know what I mean? No, they they just They just have to have a pretty face. And yeah, they it. got their butt all over Instagram <laughs> and you're like going after yeah. that because you're still addicted to yeah. lust. Like you need to break free from that before you start pursuing a woman like, there's so many men in the Bible that went through like that period of isolation because God knew that they weren't ready for, yes. you know, their ministry. Or they weren't ready to really speak into people because they were still struggling behind closed doors. Or they mm. still had to go through that full sanctification process or at least make a lot of progress in that area of their life. Yes. And I know that you have the same thing, but there's so many guys that watch my channel, they watch your channel, and they're praying for a wife and they're, they have nothing together in their life. Mm. You know, they want the wife, they want God to bring them the wife. That's all they pray for, and they go to things, like they go to events at church just hoping to find a woman when, like, they're <laughs> not actually, yeah. like, seeking first God's kingdom and working yeah. on themselves and developing themselves and mm. breaking free from things like lust and getting their life in order so that a woman can come into their life and not come into, like, a complete disaster. Yeah, yeah. You know? Exactly. Um, I, I, was, I remember what, what I was going to say earlier. I was going to say, like, you know, I always thought, in my life, like, oh man, like lust is just gonna go away and I don't have to do anything. You know, like <laughs> it's probably when I get married, it'll just go away. But like, I don't know who needs to hear this, but like lust won't go away until you step up, until you become that man who no longer goes back to the P word and you rise up and you conquer that addiction. Like I need, I think we need to get this through our minds that like, you know, s successful people, whether it be ministry or whether it be like, you know, business or whatever, or the gym or whatever area in life it's like people didn't just get there by just you know fingers crossed and doing nothing you know they they rose up to the occasion they got on and it, it, it doesn't it, people hear this and i'm like and or i used to be like man i i can't do it. you know maybe others can do it but it's like anybody who's just willing to take risks and get uncomfortable which again we talked about it earlier if you're going back to loss it's difficult to do those things so it just keeps you stuck in bondage right um but it, it won't go away. Like, yeah. you have to rise up. Yeah, like, I know that you see this all the time, but a lot of guys think that, like, maybe they can just pray a prayer or, or like, <laughs> just, you know, yeah. cross their fingers and, and say, God, please just release me from this. And they, that's all they do. You know, mm. like, they have this misconception that breaking free from lust is something that's just going to happen overnight or that it's going to be easy. Yeah. And I've even seen, like, some of your content where you're like, this is going to be one of the hardest things that you've ever done in yeah. your life. Like, it's an addiction. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of effort. It's going to take a lot of discipline, a lot of putting up the right parameters, getting yes. yourself around the right people. And, like, I think the reason why so many people struggle with it is because they, they think, think it's easy. yeah, oh, it'll be easy. Like, I'll just quit one day. Or, like, those guys are free because it was easy. Like, they did it. I'm different than they are. Like, yeah. all those same, like, misconceptions. But, like, they're blind or they're deceived. Yeah. Like, they don't understand it's going to be hard. Yeah. And it's like... That's good that it's this difficult, though, because, like, and I understand why people think, oh, it's, you know, because everything has come easy to a lot yeah. of these people, especially for myself when I was addicted to lust. Like, everything would come easy to me. I grew up in a really nice house. You know, I grew up with a dad who provided me anything I wanted, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, didn't, I never lacked. I never had a day where, like, oh, man, you know, can, or am, am I, I eating, eat? you know? Yeah. I, I never had one of those days, like, everything was so easy for me. My college was all paid for. Like mm -hmm. everything was, I was so privileged when I got, when I was 16, I, I got a Lincoln Navigator for my birthday, like a really yeah. nice car. <laughs> so it's like, I never struggled at all throughout my whole entire life. So when I actually faced a difficulty for the first time in my life, which was overcoming lust, I crumbled, you know? And I thought to myself, uh, why is this not easy? It's because life is not easy. Right. And it's like the amount of struggle that you need to go through in order to overcome lust it, it's not people just think it ends there right when they overcome lust and like you know that struggle and that what it's just over no that's to become the man to lead your family that struggle that you're going through right now is to 
you know, run that ministry that the Lord is calling you to do 10 years from the future. Right. You know, like all these sufferings that you're going through right now, like like this is biblical as well in the book of Exodus, like when the Israelites went from Egypt to the wilderness, then the promised land. He didn't just take them from Egypt to the, the promised <laughs> land right away. He made them go through the wilderness, right? So I think we need to run away from suffering and we need to embrace it and we need to say this is awesome because if it were so easy to overcome, there'd be no value in overcoming it to begin with. It's true. You know? Yeah. And I, like, while you were speaking about, like, the Exodus, I was thinking about, like, even Jesus was tested in the Bible. Like, right before his breakthrough, like, the beginning of his yeah. ministry, like, he had to go 40 days in the wilderness or wherever he was, <laughs> walking around in the desert, mm -hmm. being tested by the devil at his weakest moments. Like, he was being tested. And he relied on God's word. And mm. he's the son of God. Like, he was rooted in scripture. And he knew what not to do and what to do. But at the same time, like people have to realize that if the son of God, like if God himself was tempted, then you and I, like we're going to be tested. We're tested yeah. every single day, you know, and it's like it's easier for us to resist those temptations because we've built up a lot of fortitude. Like, yeah. And we know what to do. Like, I'm not going to go look and deep do a deep, like, mindless scroll on social media and look for some butt cheeks. But, <laughs> like, at the same time, like, you're going to be tested. And it's not going to be easy. Mm. And on that point, John Frank, I don't know if you had anything else that you wanted to, like, share with them. Mm -mm. But I was just going to ask, like, what would be your most practical advice or the best piece of advice that you could give to somebody who, let's say, let's say you're speaking to your younger self. Yeah. Right. The guy who's still struggling with PMO, who was socially awkward, who didn't know God, like that guy. Yeah. What pieces of advice would you give to him to break free from lust and also like set himself up for a future of following God and actually like achieving fulfillment and success? Yeah. Um, well, it all comes back to Matthew six thirty three, right? Like first pursue the kingdom of God, like whatever Amen. you want to do, like if you want to get a wife, first pursue the kingdom of God. If you want to overcome First pursue the kingdom of God. If you want a business, first pursue the kingdom of God. So first pursuing the kingdom of God, meaning to actually follow God, you mm -hmm. know. And I think people are like, first pursue the kingdom of God, Philippine, you know, Philippians 413 in my Instagram bio, but mm -hmm. then I don't open my Bible for like four weeks, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's it's a daily battle where it's like you're reading the and it's like if you you can't go to the Bible one day, like, you know, don't condemn yourself type of thing. But it's like, man, like reading the Bible and seeking God with everything that you have and truly within your heart, you can say there's nothing in my life right now that's a number one priority over God, mm -hmm. right? And anything can be that. Like if it's a woman for you within your life, like like a girlfriend that you have and whatnot, and you're spending more time with her than in prayer and going into the Bible or doing Bible studies with people, right? Like that's an idol within your life. True. Or even like, you know, business, if, if, if that is more in your mind all the time than just, you know, pursuing God a hundred percent, then it's, that's an idol within your life. So um, going back to your question, it's just pursuing God with literally everything that you have, um, going into the word, praying, truly seeking him, changing your friend group, right? Like if your friends are still watching or the p word that you, Corn. <laughs> like you're gonna you're gonna also fall victim to that as well yeah. so it's changing your friend group but that again all those things where it's like put your phone on the other side of your room or like put your phone you know don't take your phone into the bathroom all these things those are cool tips and whatnot but it's like the real solution is first seeking God because when you first seek God, healing comes into your heart, right? Right. When you first seek God, like you start to go through like the traumas that you had that led you to go into um, into the P word in the first place. Like when you first pursue God, like just everything aligns, you know. Um, and when I when I was mentioning the friend group part as well, like that's something that I, I struggle with that I had to let a lot of people go. Um, but that only happened when I first pursued the kingdom of God. Like, I think a lot of people, they look towards the advice that they can kind of like artificially put into their life. Like, man, like I want to change my friend group. You know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But if, if you don't have the principles of going to the word and first pursuing God, it, it it's all in vain at the yeah. end of the day. And you're just going to go back to lust. So it's, it's just, it really just boils down to first pursuing the kingdom of God. Like just everything, 
it's true. In the kingdom of and God. you see all those guys who they're telling you to break free from lust or whatever so that you can bang more girls or so mm. you can get more women or so you become more attractive and look smacks and all this stuff is superficial and it doesn't actually get to the root of the problem. Like no. what you're talking about, like all the stuff that they would tell you is just band-aids for the problem. It's kind of like if you had a bullet hole for your wound of lust and you're just trying to put a band-aid over it instead of actually taking yeah. the bullet out and healing yourself from within so that you can grow and also, you know, be led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because you're right, like that's such a good point. I remember so many times whenever I was trying, like first starting to try and break free from lust, but I wasn't seeking after God's kingdom first. And mm. so all of my friends were still like the degenerate, like frat guys. And they'd be telling me about, oh yeah, I went, I brought this girl back from the bar and we hooked up and we did this. And they'd like be filling my mind with all yeah. this garbage. And then I'd go home and I'd relapse. Mm. And so like, if I was actually seeking God first, like not only would I be in the word every single day, or at least, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like more Just strict with it. it 100%. Yeah. Being in a good church, being surrounded by good Christian men that would never talk about, yeah. you know, who they're trying to bang or wh who they met at the bar and all that, like degenerate stuff. Like we'd be talking about how to grow in our relationship with God. Yes. And we would be focused on God's kingdom first and striving towards righteousness, right? Like the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, that iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. Yeah. Like you need to surround yourself with other Christian men that are already where you want to be. Like if you want to break free from lust and all of your friends are still struggling with lust, like that's, that's fine. Like obviously you guys can heal together and work together through this, but you need to be around somebody who has conquered mm. lust yeah. so you can actually learn from them and they can tell you what to do, right? Yeah. And it's also like like the blind leading the blind, you know. Right. You know like, like everyone's struggling with lust, but like that's really like most men, you know. Um, and it's just yeah, it's it's super. I guess you know, like Ecclesiastes says, to increase in, in in wisdom is to increase in sorrow. So it's like, man, like there's not a lot of people that you say that like, oh man, just find someone who's not struggling with lust, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, probably harder said uh, than honestly, done. Honestly, like I feel like Easier there's, said than done. <laughs> there's some churches that don't have any men. That even the, the you know fifty yeah, percent pastor. of pastors struggle with lust, struggle with <laughs> or the p word, struggle with corn, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's ridiculous. You know, it's like yeah. if the pastor is struggling, everyone, well, struggling, yeah, yeah. Like, you know. So it's like it's just it's it's uh it's very sad. It's very sad. But um, John Frigo, know. where would you? tell someone to go like if they were trying to find somebody who was free from lust like what piece of advice would you have to give them if any we can't find a group in person find one online mm -hmm. um whatever that might be like a program of some sorts or just like a community or, or a discord or a reddit um something to, to the that that effect to get community there um but the biggest thing would be being like being um how do you say, say like being fed in that space and just receiving you know what i mean not being a leader of any kind just like receiving from that space and equipping yourself to a point to where you can be sent off right because this this is not just like a overcome lust for you you know this is overcome lust to save your family this is overcome yeah. lust to save your church this is overcome lust to to, to save your brother, you know what I mean? Um, whether that be brother in Christ or, or blood brother, like, you know, there's just so much of a need for men who don't look at lust and don't go back to it because it's just much more than just not looking at naked people on a screen. It's discipline. It's, you know, um, commitment. It's, it's, it's um, self-control. Yeah. Self-control is just a fruit of the spirit, right? You know, it's being obedient unto God. So it's just like all these are, are a byproduct of overcoming lust. And it's like there needs to be more men like this, and there isn't. So this is why we're making this video so that you can become that next one. Uh, because, you know, Brayden's only a human. Like, I'm only a human. And, of course, God can do whatever he wants. And, you know, he can impact as many people as possible. But, like, there's just so much more power when we equip every single person and all these Christians to go and do the work in their city mm -hmm. and to go and do their work within where, wherever community, wherever they're called to, and then they themselves equip others with what we taught them. And it's a domino effect. And yeah. it's like, you know, there's more impact being made. Yeah, 100%. No, it's true. We need more strong men. And I think it really does come down to being like a strong and disciplined and masculine and godly man. And like you were saying, seeking after God's kingdom first. Because whenever you truly do that, it aligns every aspect of your life. Like if God mm. is first truly, 
Like, you're not worried as much about the business or your career or who you're going to date or who you're going to get married to or all of those, like, smaller yeah. things. Like, whenever you're seeking after God, that's your number one priority. And all you care about is how can I know God more? How can I grow more in my relationship with Christ? How can I be sharpened so that I can become the man that God has created me to be? Amen. And whenever you're truly seeking after that, like, every other aspect of your life is going to get aligned. It's happened for me. It's happened for John Franco. Like, if you did, like you said it earlier, like, if you didn't quit pornography, like, you would, you probably wouldn't have a business. You probably would not be living here. You may still be in Minnesota. You I, know? I wouldn't be here right now. Yeah, so it's like, but John Franco started seeking first God's kingdom, and every single other part of his life came in alignment after he started to do that. It's yes. completely changed who he is. It's like finding God has completely changed who I am as well. If anybody's watching this video and they knew me in high school, I'm a completely different person. And it's not for like a vanity sake or like a prideful sake. It's what God has done through me and how he's completely changed my life for his glory. Mm. And that's the most important thing. Amen. What would you say to the guy who, let's say he's been a Christian for quite some time. Maybe he's not saved. It doesn't really matter. But he's been struggling. He's been trying to break free from lust for, let's say, months or years or maybe even a full decade. And he's yeah. continually failed. And he's almost at a point where he's like ready to give up. He doesn't know what to do. Like, what would you, what piece of advice would you give that guy? Well, because I was there myself. Um, like, I wasn't fully like a Christian like during that mm -hmm. time. But I was kind of there at like one point um, when I used to like, no fap, right? <laughs> No fab. Semen retention. Yeah, all this. <laughs> um, and um, what I would say to that person is, I don't know how much this would help, but I wish I would have really understood this when I was struggling. And that's like nobody's in control of your life except for yourself. And First yeah. Corinthians 10, 13 actually tells us that, you know, God will never you know, allow anything to come into our life beyond what we can bear. So mm -hmm. whatever God's putting in your life, whether that be temptation or a struggle like lust, like you can always overcome it through the Lord, right? right. But what happens is when you try to do your own strength and people don't understand that. They just think, oh, I'm relying on God because, you know, I put a Bible verse in my bio on Instagram. That's not like fully relying on God. Like fully relying on God is like seeking him again, Matthew six thirty-three. So it's just... Again, you know, seeking him with everything that you have and truly knowing that it's possible, you know, yeah. and that's, again, where it comes to, like, the community because if you really have a strong community of men who are all overcoming lust and you've seen that every single day, like, when, you know, 90 days PMO free and PMO meaning, you know, corn, you know, M. Beaten off. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um but when you're seeing that all the time, you're, you're starting to think to yourself, like, wow, this is possible. Like, wow, this is, you know, this is this is possible for me. Because when you're surrounded by men who are all struggling, you start to think to yourself, is this even possible? Right. And you get that limiting belief and almost like a stronghold within your mind that makes you believe that every single person, um, you know, is, is struggling with this and that it's almost impossible. And that's where that doctrine of, like, oh, well, everybody does it, you know what I mean? It's not that bad, masturbation not in the Bible, all these things, you know, um, well, God loves me either way. I'm just going to go ahead and, and go to, to PMO, right? Yeah. Which is true, but it's a perverted way of looking at it. Um, so it's just knowing that it is possible, knowing that myself or Brayden or anyone that you see online who has overcome lust, we're nothing special. In fact, like we're probably the least, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're, we're the least of, of people. Um, and... Just, yeah, knowing that that is possible and that, like, if you want to overcome lust, you can do it. Yeah. But it's just up to you if you want to step up to the plate, right? Because I think a lot of people also have, like, this, you know, so I've worked with, like, thousands of people, right, to, to overcome lust. So, obviously, like, I see some similarities, and we've seen some similarities as well. Um, and we see that, you know, a lot of guys who do struggle with lust, they have this very victim's mindset, right? Where it's like, oh, man, like, I would have never been addicted if this person didn't show me this and that, that. And it's never their fault, right? <laughs> it's never their fault within anything. So when you can truly take responsibility and say, like, hey, I'm, I'm at the point in my life where I am because of the decisions that I myself made, that's okay. But I'm going to make the right decisions going forward. Get a strong why. Get yourself into community. Seek first the kingdom of God and just... Go all in and yeah. know that you are in control of your life. Like no one is forcing you to open up the website. No one's forcing you to take your pants down and, and do what you do, right? Like you are in full control of every single decision that you make. And just that alone, it's like 
you can overcome loss. And it that. gives you freedom too. Yeah. You know, like whenever you're constantly externalizing your responsibility and the outside factors, like, man, if that kid in like fourth grade <laughs> didn't show me that girl's butt, man, this would have never happened. And they just, whenever you always externalize, yeah. like it's somebody else's fault. I'm a victim. It's not, I didn't do anything wrong. Like everything's just happening to me. You have no control. Mm. You have no power. Like if it's always like, man, if I go outside, like I'm going to get struck by a lightning bolt and that's all how you live your life, then you have no control to make any changes to do anything different. But if you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, hey, this is my fault. Mm. I'm the guy who's going into the bathroom and pulling down my pants and crank on out. Right. I'm doing that. It's me. And regardless of what happened in my past, I need to take responsibility. I'm going to and I'm yes. going to make the changes. That's whenever you start to see a re real breakthrough in your life because yeah. you have the control back. Mm. You know, you're not just a victim that's sitting there having the world's falling down and like, there's nothing I can do. Like, I'm the man. I'm going to step up. I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. Yes. I'm going to make the changes uh, I amen. need to make and I'm going to break free from this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100 yeah. percent. Well, gentlemen, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, once again, incredible attention span. You should be proud of yourself, not in a prideful way, but in a in a glorifying the Lord way because you have a great attention span. I'm impressed with you. John Frank was impressed with you. For any of you guys that are struggling with lust, which you probably are, because you click on this video, I don't want you to feel condemned. I don't want you to feel like ashamed. I want you to break free from this. Yes, and one of the man. best avenues that I can offer you is to check out John Franco's YouTube channel. I'm going to go ahead and pin it in the link in the description. I'll put it at the top link in the description. You won't miss it. But he's got so many videos on Instagram. He's got so over 300,000 <laughs> followers on Instagram. So much content. Um, so you yeah. guys can check him out on Instagram. You can, if you're, you can't sit through like a 30 minute video, which if you're here right now, you just did. So you can watch his long form videos on YouTube as well. But he's got so many videos. He's got a free Discord as well that you yeah. guys can check out. And uh, I firmly believe that if you start consuming the right content and realize mm. that our inputs determine yes. our outputs, you're going to break free from this. So fill your mind with godly content. Get around the right group of men. And I promise you, if you do those things, God will help you to break free from this addiction.